What's, What's up, guys? guys? On this week's show... Captain Marvel ruins Endgame. James Gunn is back. And Harry Potter go? All that and more on this episode... Of One Giant Leap for Geeks. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for man. Geeks. Welcome to another episode of OGLFG, where we talk about movies, video games, and all things in geek culture. I'm your host, Mike C. Squared. And with me are my co-hosts, Benoit. Happy Spring Equinox. And DJ Melly Mel. Hey. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know, if you enjoy the show, tell some friends about us. Share us on your social media, whatever you choose to do. Just know that you are helping us let others know about the best damn podcast they've probably never heard of. Now. If you want to talk to us, we are on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks. If you want to get a hold of our resident DJ Melly Mel, she is at Froggy Beaver and Benoit is at Benoit Gaming. That's B-E-N-W-A-H Gaming. Are, are you okay? <laughs> we interrupt his progress. My bad, my bad. Man. I got okay, my okay. dice. My bad. No, Sorry. you're good. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck happened? Whoa. Oh, shit, the mic. <laughs> Well, Ben. Uh, we're doing the award <laughs> ceremony again. That's what's happening. <laughs> what you been doing? Fucking being pissy and old and sore and not, not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to start calling you our resident old man. Yeah. You can. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel your pain. I, I do. Same. It's the fighting the, the Reaper every day. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Mel? Um, I actually had a pretty eventful week. Um, Friday, my brother and I went and saw the opening tour date of Skillet and yes, Under Oath. I and saw that Breaking on Facebook. Benjamin and Fight the Fury. Nice. Um, so, 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 tell me, what is it like seeing like kind of like a punk band now that they're like in their forties? Like, what? How does that? Are they still? They, they were. Per, um, <laughs> Are you Not talking about got Breaking like, Benjamin? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. They were very loud and still, still, still rocking. You know, still yeah. dropping that fuck f word. You know, wherever they can. You, you can swear on. Yeah, that. I know. Okay. I'm gonna say, I, what kind of music do you think they played, man? None of those bands are punk. Well, I mean, I guess I say it's more of a heavy rock. They're rock or new metal in the case of yeah. like Breaking Benjamin. Okay, okay. New and Skillet metal. is a Christian band. What yes, the they are. But well, no, no, I'm in Breaking Benjamin. I, I don't even know shit about Skillet. No. See, we went for Skillet. We didn't even care about Breaking Benjamin. <laughs> wow. We we were waiting for Skillet, and we saw Fight the Fury. Um, they were a little screamier than I like, and Under Oath was really good. Um, kind of got into a little bit of them after the concert. Sure. I uh, looked them up on Spotify, so kudos to that. And then Skillet was freaking amazing. And then Breaking Benjamin, they were, I mean, they were all right. They had lots of energy and a cool set, but. So Skillet's a Christian heavy metal band? Yes. Hmm. You should look them up. Interesting. Because in my mind, when I hear that, all I can think is like, Jesus Christ! No, <laughs> they really don't. They don't. No? Not no. at all. Oh, they should. Though. They're they're very. Um... Sorry for your ears, people. <laughs> Yeah, I don't you, know what I was you gonna should, say you there because I look lost track up. of it. <laughs> I enjoy them thoroughly. Um, but but overall though. But overall, I mean yeah. it was worth the forty bucks that we paid. Not bad. So, so to get to see what, four bands? Four bands. Yeah. Four four bands for forty bucks. So how how long was the set? Um each one was about a half hour with a fifteen minute interval. Okay. Uh Breaking Benjamin went a little longer than that. Mm -hmm. We didn't stay the whole set for Breaking Benjamin, but we you know, my brother and I were getting old and <sighs> He walked out. He did get punched in the nuts and in the Punched kidney. in the nuts? Yeah. What the fuck was y'all doing? Um, there was... Okay, so you know how the Dow is, right? And sure. And where the ice usually is yes. for hockey? Yes, uh-huh. We were about this close, like... To an actual hockey game? Like, no, <laughs> no, to each other. No, no I know, a, I know. I'm still trying seats. to figure out how you got punched in the nuts. A bunch of people jumping around, and this chick was jumping, and... 
he went to move and she jumped and her arm went down. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, because I'm like him. kicked, knee, no, like, like something like that, hand, punched in the nuts. Her hand went down and. Oh, she doing that like yeah, swing she fist was, and shit? I don't know yeah. what the fuck she was oh, doing. God. She was on the oh, she, other she side was, She was it. hardcore dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah. she was getting into it. And then the Power Ranger. We were, so, we were so close <laughs> that the dude behind him was dancing for, I believe, Breaking Benjamin. Mm-hmm. And then they whacked my brother in the kidney. And I'm like, oh, damn. And he's like, yeah. And so he was going to tough it out to try to stay. And then his knee started hurting and my feet were hurting. And I was just like, let's just go. <laughs> see, I see. And this thing, I like rock, man. But I can't fuck around at them kind of concerts, man. Because I swear. I mean, they had people in the seats, too. Yeah. They man. were only, There was only a $5 difference between the seats and the floor. It's like, you do your thing, but you put your hands on me. <laughs> and like, He saved me from shit. a mosh pit. Fuck that. Nah. Like, I was dancing to Skillet, and all of a sudden, I'm being moved. Now, my brother's probably 400 pounds or so. Mm-hmm. So he, like, lifted me up and moved me. And I'm like, what the hell? What are you doing? He's like, look. And there's this big old mosh pit probably three feet from us. Oh, no. Um. Yeah, the the guy from Breaking Benjamin even stopped the concert. He's like, hey, hey, hey. See, I know. I, I was gonna say, I'm like, nowadays they're like, hey, man, y'all gotta kill that shit. Like, we He's just like, here to have fun. We, we ain't trying to have nobody getting hurt. Can we just yeah. get along? But Plus, yeah. I think it's like insurance liabilities and shit. So yeah, we saw a guy get carted out. Carted out. Um, four security guards carried him because he was so drunk. Well, you Christian had fun. Rock. I did. Yeah. 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 I know, right, Christian. <laughs> I had a great time. It oh, was it nice. was great. I still want to believe in my mind that they just screamed Jesus Christ. No, they you know they like only mentioned him once. So I thought that was pretty neat. <laughs> Why are you making her face? <laughs> She's like only once, you know. Yeah. And they didn't you know, he the guy was just like, Okay, well we're gonna sing the song Hero and some people save it for their wife, some people save it for their, their mom or their sister or whatever. He's like Long as you save it for Jesus, then we're all set. Boo! <laughs> Gay! <laughs> Gay! Shut up, man. Oh, that was hilarious. We had a good time, oh. man. My brother and I. But no, no, it sounds like we it was fun. We don't get to bond very much. I mean, minus so. him getting fucking jackhammered in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it sounded like he had a good time. I didn't even know he got hit in the balls until I. Like, He's like, you know, I kind of like this, so it's not I that bad. Back and he, he had this look on his face, and he gets. This look when he's pissed off. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, yeah, having a good time. Woohoo. Go, go. And I was right, like, Jesus what the Christ. Fuck is wrong with you? We got in the truck and he's like, I got need in the, or I got hit in the balls. I'm like, oh my so God. So she was kind of high. It was okay. I yeah, got she over She was it. definitely drunk. No. Oh. I was afraid somebody was going to spill their beer on him and he was going to lose it, but he didn't. So <laughs> good. Well, if he got fucking hot yuking in the balls and shit, <laughs> if that didn't piss him off, the beer should have been like whatever at that point. Anyway. But yeah, we we had a great time. And then after my weekend with my concerts, I got sick. So it's been an eventful week. Clearly. You mean hungover? No, I did not get hungover. I didn't drink at all this weekend. Oh, no, I take that. As opposed to every other weekend? No, I meant in regards to St. Patrick's Day. As far as I know, you're not a big drinker like that. No, not really. It's just the way she said it. I did not get drunk this weekend. Yeah, I know. I I meant because it was St. Patrick's Day this weekend, and everybody got drunk. I didn't. I had one drink on Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. And I was in the comfort of my own home. I had one juice and... All right, wrap this shit up. Come on. (laughs) I don't need alcohol because I get intoxicated on Jesus. Right, there you go, yeah. I'm I'm drunk off the blood of Christ. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Right, right. Oh no, no. It it sounds like you had a good time. I did. I had a blast. No, I, I, I was just saying off mic. I had this whole thing planned out for what I was going to talk about for what you've been doing this Mm -hmm. week, and I completely threw it out the window because all I've been doing is cleaning out my basement because it flooded yesterday. Yay. Damn. So I was on my way to work. Um, I was going downstairs to get my gallon of water to take with me to go drink. And I'm at the top of the stairs. And I'm like, there's something shimmery on the floor downstairs. I'm like, that's weird. And I'm like, as I'm starting to go down the stairs, I can hear like the running water. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, God, no. And I turn the light on and the whole floor is just flooded from like as far as I can see. It was probably a good two, three inches when I oh, went down there. Man. And I was like, fuck. 
so where where I live, I have a sump pump because we have like underground springs and a well and all that shit, and it pumps water out into the little ditch, the ditch. outside and. There's some kind of blockage and or the pipe broken. There's some reason that it didn't go out there. So either the pipe broke or there's a blockage somewhere and the sump pump stopped working. And the backup battery that's supposed to kick in when it doesn't work, that didn't work either. So everything that could have went wrong did and my whole basement got flooded. Um, I didn't lose any like super like valuables like you know i didn't have a mona lisa down there or like didn't the fucking washer and dryer. Like, thinking man or nothing like that no no all the appliances are good and all that stuff but it's just like sentimental stuff like a lot of my like you know um stuff from high school and like you know diplomas and stuff got wet Aww. some pictures and stuff like that got wet irreplaceable things but not things where it was just like oh god you know my whole life is falling apart right. because i can't but yeah that that's that's not been... not your dead grandma's baby blanket or anything. No, like No, no. But even still, at that point, if it was down there in the basement, I wouldn't do a shit with it. Probably. Now, so. Yeah. But yeah. So that's why you don't ever put anything important down there. Pretty much. Yeah. I was gonna say if, if it means something to you, you put it somewhere where it's safe. But that being said, I have got it mostly dried out. Um, we're gonna have to cut a bunch of wood out and stuff so it doesn't mold. And that's going to be fun. So I'm yeah. in the process of gutting the basement now as we speak. Yeah, because if you get that mold in your walls, it's done. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Then we'll have to move the show to my house. <laughs> right, right. I ain't going through that shit again. Right, hell no. <laughs> but, yeah, so pray for you, boy, because this is going to be a least a week or two long project of gutting and cutting. and. So I take it yeah. you didn't go to work yesterday no well i was at work i because i had to open so i had to go in but i left early and then i didn't go in today because i've just been doing that the insurance guy came out here so we can do our claim and shit because luckily we have flood insurance oh there you go there is that but i should probably get some of that it's still all bullshit i don't know you're in an apartment do you need flood insurance because isn't that on the apartment at that point if something happens i would think so I don't know. I don't know how I don't the Michigan know how it law works, works for that kind of I'll shit. I'll have to look into it. Anyway, I know anyway. you guys don't care. All right, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Under ideal conditions, it takes 24 to 48 hours for mold to germinate and grow. Typically, the spores begin to colonize in 3 to 12 days and become visible in about 18 to 21 days. Suffice it to say, you better get on that shit quick. <laughs> The final trailer for Avengers Endgame came out. We may get another one. I don't know. It comes out in like a little under a month Mm -hmm. or a little over a month at this point. April 26th. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if they're going to put anything else out between now and then. I maybe I don't think so, though, because they've done a pretty good job of they held off for a while before they even put out the first trailer. And then we didn't get anything else until the Super Bowl came out. And now we got this. So, they're being very sparse with the information that they were putting out about the movie, but this is the newest look we have at the movie, and just before we get into all the little conspiracy theories and stuff, what did you guys think? Like, are you... Did this answer any questions you may have had, or has this raised more questions than it actually answered? What you think, Ben? I had to go back and watch the first trailer again because I'm like, okay, what? And I, I didn't feel like it added anything that I didn't already know before. Like it, it felt it felt new to me because I had to go back and watch the first one first to go, okay, wait a minute, did this? Sh-? But no, same situation. Half the population's gone. People faded away. This in no way amps me up for the film. I did. It was just another trailer. Okay. Okay. Mel's like shocking. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mel? Um, it it didn't really answer any questions. Mm-hmm. It definitely got me more excited to see mm-hmm. Endgame, especially after seeing Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seeing how everything's gonna kind of tie together. 
And I know that they're not going to give us all of the good parts. No, no. Not even close. They haven't given us anything, really. So, I'm... (laughs) We ain't seen a punch getting thrown. Uh, We saw, I think, the most action we got out of all the trailers we've seen so far is there was an explosion in this one. One (laughs) And and I don't even know what's happening. I have no context, so yeah. Yeah, I... I I didn't want to mention that, but I did read another article the other day saying that Captain Marvel was going to become a major part of the MCU. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well... They kind of gave us that in the, Captain Marvel. Well, yeah, but if you haven't seen the movie, you know, but yeah. it, it's on its way to probably going to end up making a billion dollars by this point because uh-huh. it's already at like 700 and something million worldwide. So, yeah. which I was like, wow. Again, it, uh, spoiler alert, if you didn't listen to our review from last week, I thought the movie was meh. It was yeah. all right. A billion dollars? If it hits that, hey, yay, Captain Uh, Marvel. It was definitely no Black Panther, but... Nah, hell nah. It seems to be... It was alright. It seems to be making money. Yeah, people like like it. Black Panther. For the most part, people like it. Yeah. But yeah, no, they... The... But no, you you, you had a thought. Um, Uh, Go ahead and finish. It just... I'm more excited to see Endgame. I I know that they haven't really given us anything, Mm -hmm. so... We kind of just are bouncing around with speculation at this point. True. You know, us hardcore fannies were like... Fannies? I don't... Uh, <laughs> what? I don't like I, that term. I, I don't like I'm, that. I'm under cold medicine, so... Yeah, I'm like, wherever you got that term, right put there. that shit back. <laughs> I mean, I, I like some hardcore fannies, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, it but sounds not, like... Not, not in that context. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it sounds like... Like a, a another weird <laughs> subcategory on Pornhub, fanny porn. Like, ugh. Like, I don't know. <laughs> just pop out the bunch of no, fanny No, when, when you put it that way, it just sounds like old women's butts. I know, I know, I know. That's what I'm like, ugh. Like grandma doing anal. No, <laughs> oh, <laughs> gilf anal. 60 plus. Ew. Compilation. Ew. Porn music video. Let's Ew. go. All right. Anyway. Anyways. Do the Charleston. <laughs> give us. Um, hardcore fans. There we go. No, there I think go. that's what I wanted. Fannies. <laughs> hashtag fannies. We gotta get that going. No, no, we do not. <laughs> I'm gonna start that hashtag. Urban Dictionary, uh, here we come. Yeah. Anyways, it's gonna, um, give us hardcore fans, you know, something to look forward to, so. Right. I, I, know, I need a month to go by kind of quickly, so. uh, Man, I know, right? I'm like, you bet stop ass- cock-teasing me. <laughs> we are going to see this opening night. Oh, for sure. So there, let me take that day off. <laughs> there, there, were, there were a couple of things that I wanted to address in the trailer. The most important thing that I got from this whole thing is we need to talk about Hawkeye's haircut because <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Oh now I get it. All right, his families—they have a little flashback with him at the beginning with his daughter shooting the arrow, uh-huh. and I was like, oh yeah, his family probably got dusted. And this is why he goes off and becomes Ronin and he's assassinating mm-hmm. people in Japan or whatever the fuck with the sword and shit. But I'm like, that haircut, man. I get it. You having a crisis of, of, of faith right now and all is lost and you darker. But I don't know what fucking um, uh, Great Clips uh, or wherever the fuck he went to. <laughs> no, he did that shit himself. <laughs> but, man, that, that Mohawk shit he got going, I was like, you... You stop it. He took a sword and did You are 43 with years old. You, no. You, you have not had a mohawk at this point before in your life. It is too late for you to be doing that now. Yeah. Like, I feel like Hawkeye is driving like a Lamborghini now. <laughs> and he has a mohawk and shit. He wears those jeans with that, like, weird emblem on the pocket and shit that, like, old dudes stop. wear. <laughs> stop. Stop. <laughs> Velcro shoes. No, all his jackets are leather and shit, and it's just like, oh, stop it. He's like the guy from the Geico commercial. Yeah, for real, I swear. Can we get a round of jalapeno poppers? Oh, God, jalapeno. <laughs> Um, but but one of the other things, aside from Hawkeye's haircut, <laughs> is um, uh, the, the new suits. So yeah. we got the little slow-mo walk with everybody. Now, they showed it in the Super Bowl trailer, but it was from a distance, so you couldn't really see who was in the lineup. Right. But they were all wearing these matching, like, red and white suits. And here's where the, the theories come in. Theories! Theories! So. Bring on the conspiracies. It is rumored or theorized to be that there may be time travel in this movie because they have to undo what Thanos did. Like, we cannot let this stand. Right. You know, just like they said in the last one, um, 
some people move on, but not us. And then this one, they're like, you know, whatever it takes. So they're going to undo this shit somehow, some way. Uh-huh. And there's theories that they're going to use time travel. And then there's other theories that they're going to use the quantum realm, which they used in uh, the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. Uh And that's somehow going to do something. I don't know. So whatever – or some people have also theorized that these are spacesuits because they have to go to another planet to go find Thanos. And so they're using spacesuits to go Mm -hmm. do that, which if that's the case, though – it kind of confused me because Thor can use the Bifrost with his new hammer now, and he can just go anywhere. Right. So they don't really need to go. And Captain to space. Marvel already has a spacesuit. Right. And right. But Tony's already stuck in space. And... Right. Though we do see him in that <laughs> slow motion walk. Mm-hmm. We see him and Nebula. So, and some people were like, "Oh, you spoiled the movie," and I'm like, "Really? Did you really think?" That Iron Man was not going to fight again in this movie. Like, he was going to be stuck in space or he was going to die in the first 20 minutes of the movie. I was like, come come on, man. Like, you, they played that up in the trailer to give you more higher stakes and dramatization, but it was never going to be Iron Man's going to die before the end of the movie or, you know, before he fights Thanos again. Like, no, that was never going to happen. One of the other things that have been, um, theorized and stuff is black widow's hair now her hair length changes at a few different points throughout this trailer she has the short little blonde bob in some scenes then it's longer and red in other scenes so there's going to be a progression of time in between when we first pick up from the beginning of the movie to probably by the end so it seems like at least a couple years has passed since this all started going down so I'm I'm interested to see how much time has passed by the end of this movie because I feel like it's going to be like, okay, two years later and now they're finally going to go kick Thanos in his balls or jackhammer him in the nuts or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, though the, 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 the one last point that I want to bring up, though, is Captain Marvel. Now, there was some controversy around Brie Larson and the Captain Marvel movie before it came out. And there's still people... There's been motherfuckers who have been online just saying all kind of crazy shit. They, they've they been saying shit from... There's fake reviews, fake positive reviews on Rotten Tomatoes for the movie because Rotten Tomatoes did go and delete like 30,000 user reviews of the movie. Uh, huh. But, to be fair, Infinity War in its entire theatrical run had 50 some odd thousand user reviews captain marvel hit that same number within a day of its release and i'm like okay something ain't right here not that many people went and saw this movie day one and then ran around tomatoes and made a review so a lot of those reviews because the user reviews were like down to like 20 some odd percent right and a lot of those user reviews were botted negative reviews because i'm like you can't tell me that the biggest movie of last year that made two billion dollars has the same amount of reviews of this movie that just came out within a day within its entire two-month run or however long infinity war was in theaters i was like yeah something ain't right there i I mean i don't know there's a lot of angry rednecks out there yeah but even still i'm like there ain't that many motherfuckers (laughs) the movie is gonna make a billion dollars clearly it ain't that many people mad at shit that's true so uh, but not only that, but there's other people saying, oh, the uh, Disney is, is, is lying about the, the, the ticket sales and they're buying tickets to the movie. So the theaters are sold out, even though people aren't there. And I'm like, what sense does that make for, right. for Disney overall? They're not making any money if they buy the They're tickets. losing money, that's spending what I mean. money on tickets to, to, to do what? Inflate their stock price? I was like, you know that that's illegal, right? right. Like, Very they could, so. like, lose the company behind some shit like that. I'm like, oh, just to make Captain Marvel popular? I was like, listen to how you sound right now. Like, you sound like them crazy motherfuckers that was making them DC conspiracy theories that critics were just Uh you know giving it bad reviews because disney was paying them off and i'm like y'all sound fucking crazy right stop the world's not that complicated no no it's like there is a lot of people who don't spend their time on the internet looking at youtube videos about this kind of shit listening to podcasts like this that just want to go see a fucking movie and don't give a shit and don't even know about all this shit right so it's like they're like oh that looks like a good movie let's go see that exactly like all right it's a marvel movie let's do it But anyway, all that being said, 
now with this trailer, you know, now, uh, spoiler alert for the stinger for Captain Marvel, if you haven't seen the movie, but at the end of that, she shows up to the Avengers, um, headquarters with the little Nick Fury pager, and she's like, where, where the fuck is Fury? Like, well, like, what, what the fuck is happening? And That's pretty much what she says. Pretty Real close. It. She's like, bitch! <laughs> 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 and, and so, they show her in this trailer, and, you know, Thor walks up to her, and she turns around, and he's, like, looking at her, and he calls over uh, Stormbreaker, and he grabs it, and she just kind of looks down at it as it whizzes by, and he kind of stares at her, and he's like, I like this one. And then it goes away, and they're like, oh, oh, uh, uh, Thor would totally wreck Captain Marvel, and she... Da, 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 da. Uh, I don't know. And I'm just like, man, it's not a dick measuring contest. It was just him testing her metal to see, like, okay... Can you be of use to us? Like, can you actually help us? Right. You know, it's like, we don't need to bring somebody else onto the team if you can't hold your own. We don't need another Hawkeye. Right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> right, right. This, he already having a crisis of identity <laughs> over here. We don't need nobody else coming to this shit fucking up. But I'm like, it was just to try and just show like, hey, she can hang with the rest of the team. Right. That's all. And people are like, oh, she ruining the Avengers and this SJW beta cuck, libtard snowflake, ba 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 go suck a dick. Yeah, it's just a... You just turned into like Bill Cosby for a second. <laughs> <laughs> then you take the cuck and you stick oh, it in the body. Oh, my God. All right. All right. And then you take the beta cucks and you make them go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Bah, and the SJWs and the puddings and the pops. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, I, I I am excited to see Captain Marvel interact with the rest of the team. I, I think she's going to be able to hold her own. I didn't love her in her own movie, but with a lot of the Marvel characters, I like them better when they're in a group. Uh-huh. You know, because I like Doctor Strange enough, but I loved him in Infinity War. He right. was like one of the best parts right. of that movie. Like I was telling Team Money, I was like, you know, when the first Thor come out, I was like, eh, all right, he's he's cool. Yeah. When the first Cap come out, I was that, like, no, that, that Thor is a great example. Thor's a good one. I did not like Thor. I was just like, okay, he's he's cool. It then, wasn't until the Avengers where I was like, okay, I like yeah, this dude. yeah, yeah. But he, in his first solo movie, I was like, eh, I don't like. I this think shit. that's all of them though, it, on the exception of Black Panther. Iron Man though, was Iron dope. Man. Was I good. love Cap. Some people I don't like say, Captain America: First I like Avenger. Cap. I love that movie. My. My favorite Iron Man is the first one. Yeah, sure. Uh, by two, I was like, eh, sure. he's getting too full of himself. And then three, I was just like, really? That's yeah. enough. But, like, all of their first movies, like I said, on the exception of Black Panther and the Spider-Man, the, the first Spider-Man. Um, yeah, Homecoming. Homecoming. Yeah. That was that was pretty legit on mm -hmm. its own. But the first ones are always, eh. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Usually, the first movie is never like, "Oh my god, right. holy shit!" Yeah, right. No. Like I said, on the exception of Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, we saw him in Civil War before we even saw him in his own first yeah. movie, so we already kind of knew what to expect going him, yeah. into his anyway. Yeah, like Captain Marvel was literally out of nowhere. So, but yeah. Anywho, I'm I'm excited for Endgame. Uh, it comes out in a little over a month, so. Yeah, cannot wait. I would say we better buy our tickets now. <laughs> right, right, as pretty soon much. As pre -sale well, I don't know because Disney's gonna buy up the seats yeah. and there's gonna be empty theaters and. Well, when I went and saw Captain Marvel opening night, there was not an empty seat. In yeah, the house. we had a. I don't think it was every seat sold out, but our theater was pretty packed. And every weekend we or, or drive... every day since then, that movie theater in in the area we went uh -huh. to has been packed we, and there's nothing else playing that that many people right. were going to see so. we had to drive all the way to bay city to find a theater that even had yeah tickets left well because disney bought out all the yeah. theaters don't you know it's just no. a bunch of empty theaters no and... no 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 because no. <laughs> the one that we went to was there was not a seat like if you and amber would have wanted to come with us we couldn't have got four seats together yeah they had, like, one here, one there. Mm -hmm. They didn't yeah, have... people were going to, like, groups. Yeah. We didn't ha We barely got two together. Yeah. Or three. Yeah, two. Because his sister didn't go with us. But anyway. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Yes. I kind of like Hawkeye's haircut. It gives this devil may use hair care look to his character. Fight the haters. Do your thing, queen. We 
are going back to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Uh, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Again? Yeah, I know. I that know. I, it's horrible. I know. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, you're a wizard, Harry. Um, okay. That so, was a little bit better. So, the, <laughs> my Hagrid's better than anything else. <laughs> so, yes. Um, if you are not aware, um, the video game company Niantic, I think okay. is how you say it, they made the Pokemon Go, the uh-huh. worldwide phenomenon that pissed me off for a good summer and a half <laughs> because I'm just like, if y'all don't get the fuck away from my store with this stupid ass fucking game, <laughs> they are making a Harry Potter game, mobile game, uh-huh. in the same vein of Pokemon Go. Okay. And what are you going to collect? Yeah. Oh, you're getting there. I'm sorry. Oh, trust me. I got all the goodies, so you, I'm going to break it down for you. So it will be called um, Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Okay. Yeah. Hey, don't you roll your eyes at this shit. <laughs> you too can be a Gryffindor or a Slytherin or a... Hufflepuff, Puff or, or uh, right, right, or a, a syphilis or Slytherin or whatever, or a virgin for the rest of your life. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, okay, now I'm getting this from TechRadar.com. Now, th- this is the breakdown because they got to actually get a hands-on time with the game, and they kind of broke it down. So, um, ends will be in the uh, game. Um, I N N S ends. Uh, in serve a variety of cuisine, both magical and British, which eat with each plate giving you more spell energy to use for combat. Okay, uh, some plates give more energy than others, so you are presented with several covered serving covered serving dishes and asked to pick one at random. It's down to luck of the draw, and you have to wait another five minutes before you can pick another one. But don't worry, the world is littered with ends to gather energy from. So these are kind of like the uh, what, what was the things called, Ben? The, uh, the gems? Yeah, the gems from the Pokemon Go uh, okay. game. Okay. Yeah. So something similar to that. And uh, to gather energy from. Alongside ends, the other notable buildings dotted across the map are greenhouses. Greenhouses reward you with ingredients used for potion brewing. But much like ends, what you get is the luck of the draw. Now they go on to talk about combat. While adventuring, you will come across beasties and wizards in the world that are protecting... Stop laughing. (laughs) That are protecting the foundable items, quote-unquote. That's what Niantic is calling them. You're trying to track down. It's your job to dispel the confounding magic being used on the foundable so you can return it or defeat the witch and or wizard that's causing you grief. Before you begin battle, you can assess the threat level of your enemy and decide if it's worth the risk. Landmark events. Some battles are landmark events, which feed into the game's main story and often see you revisiting a classic event from the Wizarding World franchise, such as saving a Quidditch-clad Harry from a fatal Dementor's kiss. Ah. (laughs) Now, with any of these mobile games, you know, they're free to play, but there will be microtransactions. So before you, you know, even think it's going to be just free and clear, you will be paying these bitches something for this shit. So they said, yes, you will be able to pay real-world money for the spell energy and other items, but Niantic insists that it doesn't affect progression and merely reduces waiting times. Now, if you've ever played any things like like the Mobile Sims games or like the the, the Simpsons mobile game, anything like that, basically when when you're building or recharging something, there's like a wait time Mm. or... It's like, oh, you can use these gems, which if you give us five ninety nine, we'll give you know, you 500 right? It'll, it'll, you don't have to wait twenty four hours before you can do this thing again. So, it's, it's not gonna keep you from playing the game altogether, but it's definitely gonna slow you down mm-hmm. if you're not paying real money. Right. And progression is gonna be like at a crawl at some points right. because they want you to pay. They, they always pretend like, no, 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 you can still play and not give us money, but not really. You can, but it's like I can get to where you are within a matter of hours, which probably took you like a week. So, right. yeah, that's how these things kind of go. But as far as the story goes, it is set in present day. Wizards Unite sees the wizarding world facing an existential crisis, which is threatening to exp- to explore the magical world, expose the magical world to, muggle- to muggles. <laughs> This calamity, as Niantic calls it, sees beasts, people, and artifacts from the Harry Potter franchise being scattered across the world, and it's up to players to contain it. 
The Ministry of Magic is calling for wizards, a.k.a. players, to join a task force in an effort to locate these magical items, dispel the confounding magic surrounding them, and return them before muggles catch sight. Niantic has promised this will be a long-haul game, much like Pokemon Go. They even have post-launch content planned. So this is something that they are planning on producing content for and keeping people playing for years. So the next time you're at the mall and you see two assholes in a parking lot screaming Expelliarmus and shit, you'll know why, because they're playing fucking Harry Potter Go. Not Harry Potter Wizard Unite. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Excuse me. All that being said with the info dump, does this sound like something you'd actually play? No. No? Now, no. Now, it, no. Is, is it because no. you're just intrinsically against these kind of games, or does it not sound interesting to you? Like, if this was something you could play on a console Both. or a PC, would you not be interested still? Still, yeah. No. No interest. Well, why y'all hating on Harry Potter? <laughs> what, what's, what's the deal? I'm tell, over- tell me how you feel. Okay. So, when the whole Harry Potter craze was going about, mm-hmm. and... Like, 2001. Don't try Anyways. and date that shit. Harry Potter is timeless, goddamn. Okay, okay. <laughs> the only reason that I wanted to get into Harry Potter in the first place is because I was told that I couldn't. So, once I got into it, I never really got into it. Like, I watched all the movies. I read four books. You don't get into Harry Potter. Harry Potter gets into you. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. I do not want no little boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he is a grown man. He has a family now. It's okay. Even worse. Daniel Radcliffe's like 28 or something. I don't know. I'd let Hermione get into me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Anyways, um, it just, I never, it wasn't something that caught my attention. Okay. And I played Pokemon Go for a little bit. Okay. Very little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I just, I lost interest in it. Yeah. Because when you're out walking around and you're looking for these things. You're dodging, trying to get hit from cars and shit. You're literally looking at your phone and you're missing everything around you. Okay. That's fair. I don't know. Not my cup of tea. What about you, Benoit? Why why are you against this? Well, I mean, I've never... Okay. One, it's Harry Potter. I don't give two fucks. (laughs) Damn. Never... (laughs) Never read the books. Never saw the movies. <gasps> really? I did play... You didn't even see the movies? Really? No. Fuck no. Oh, oh man. I um, I played Prisoner of Azkaban because that was one of the random games I had to play for stream. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I, I have no care at all. Now, I do like the idea that this may get some people out and motivate them. And I, I like the whole um, pseudo-exercise aspect this might bring, kind of like Pokemon Go. Sure. Because I did do Pokemon Go... Very briefly, mm. but that was that wasn't for the game or for Pokemon. That was as like an excuse to get me outside because uh, I just recently got my Fitbit and I had buddies who did it, and we would go out like you know midnight, one two a.m. Oh wow! And there was a lot of people. It, there, there was well, more. It, than it you became think. like oh yeah, oh yeah. There was a lot of people, and at that time of the day, we did not have to worry about traffic or just people getting in the way of anything else. Mm. So it, it was an excuse for me to get outside and be active during the summer. Mm. But eventually, you know, the weather got cooler, and I didn't care about the game, so I just stopped doing it. Um, so, I, so I guess in that aspect, I'm, I'm not going to do it myself, but I like how it might motivate some people into being active. And I think it would be great if we had more ways to incorporate gaming into physical activity and exercise. But, like, this whole Harry Potter thing for me, no bueno. <laughs> Don't care. I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. Like I never had any any interest in Pokemon Go. I'm I'm surprised. I'm actually the only one a part of this group that never played it at all. I nothing about it ever seemed interesting to me. I was just like ah oh, whatever. I uh, but I do love Harry Potter. I've read all the books, seen all the movies. Um, one day my life goal is to go to the theme park. I want to go to Harry Potter World and go drink some butter beer and. Do all that fun I'll shit. Say you can buy the Ernie's Ever Flavor Beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can buy those in stores. Yeah, it's not the same. I want to go to Hogwarts and have it there, okay? Oh, okay. On my own. Uh, Dobby, house elf. No, because that's like slavery, so never mind. But, you can get but, your own Fluffy. That's yeah, dog. sure, okay. But no, I, I, I'm, I'm very into the Harry Potter franchise. I even have my own Voldemort uh, wand. I have the Elder Wand somewhere okay. in the house. Mm-hmm. And Hope it wasn't in the basement. No, no, <laughs> no. Um, 
But but no, but the, just I'm kind of just against kind of why <clears throat> how I explain the whole microtransactions. Just in in on principle, I'm kind of against mobile games because I I just feel like they're just a money trap. Mm-hmm. Like they get you into it, you get to a certain level once you've invested so much time and energy into it, you almost inevitably end up spending money on it because it's like if you get hooked on it and you enjoy it, if you want to keep playing at a normal pace, you have to spend money on it, and that's right. how they get you. It's like it's like crack. They give you your first taste is free, and <laughs> and and, and, and then when you more. come back, yeah, it's like now now they want some money. Yeah. So I'm like, but I, it, it does sound interesting. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe if I actually see it in action and see people playing it, maybe they'll get me turned around. Who knows? But I worry that it's gonna do like Pokemon Go did and have too many people try to play it while they drive. Yeah, yeah. Especially with it being more than just fling the little ball and catch the Pokemon. Right. Like, with Pokemon Go, you fling... You're sticking the, a phone out the window well, you, and yeah, shit, you screaming fling, shit. You fling yeah. the Pokeball, and you draw a circle around the little Pokemon, and then you catch it. Yeah. With this, it sounds like it's going to be... You're going to be... Um, Fighting wizards. And, like a virtual reality on your phone kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, augmented reality. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I worry that the people that took Pokemon Go out into driving is mm-hmm. going to be... They're yeah. gonna do it more with the Harry no, Potter. No, I agree. I agree. Because I know now that you mentioned that, I I did see cops in their uh, squad car playing Pokemon Go. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> cops are a whole other story. They get like to... there's somebody being literally murdered in a ditch right now, yeah, and y'all motherfuckers playing Pokemon they get to Go. Do whatever they want. But I, I know people, and they they would literally drive down the road while playing Pokemon oh, yeah. Go. Oh, yeah. And so they're driving in both lanes and swerving back and forth trying to play this. Or I get that they're running squirrel. stop lights or they're, you know, running stop signs. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, you you can't be doing this. You've got kids. It's going to be this kind of shit is what's going to finally make the government say, okay, we're automating, or automating vehicles, no more driving. Y'all motherfuckers is doing too much stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Give it like another 10, 15 years, I'm telling you. Oh, You're going to sure. start seeing automated cars everywhere. Oh, I'm sure. People are going to do some ignorant ass shit and kill somebody, and they're going to be like, all right, that's it. You're done. We're taking control away. We're done. Yeah. Well, they already have the technology to put breathalyzers into cars yep. where they won't start yep. until you... Mm-hmm. Uh, the auto you know, park and over. the... Yep. the Auto drive and the mm-hmm. lane assist and yeah, and you it, got dumbass coming. people who think cruise control means that the car is on autopilot suddenly. Yeah, or some shit, so. <laughs> go take a nap in the back of the <laughs> RV. Oh. I'm telling, I, I think you're right. By the time you know your kids graduate high school, oh yeah. By the time mine are around, mm-hmm. we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna definitely have self driving vehicles. Which I mean. I'm kind of okay with that because, I mean, hey, it'll make having sex in the car a whole lot whole easier. A whole lot easier. So, hey, so, hey <laughs> look, shit, put this shit on autopilot. We're in the back seat. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Harry Potter is a franchise prince money. It was only a matter of time before they used it to milk microtransactions out of people. It's diabolical, but it's genius. Welcome to Benoit's Webbit Hole. It's where I, Benoit, give you a brief synopsis of random things I found interesting on the internet. Some of these things may be further elaborated on in future podcasts, but I'd recommend you dig deeper for yourself if you're interested. The views and opinions expressed in the Webbit Hole are those of Benoit's and Benoit's alone, and do not necessarily reflect the position of any member, affiliate, or future sponsor, despite us not having any of the One Giant Leap for Geeks podcast. Last week, Nintendo added the 1999 action-adventure Star Tropics to the Switch Online app. Unfortunately, Nintendo forgot to include an important piece of information, rendering the game virtually impossible to complete without online guidance. When the game was originally released for the NES, it came with a physical letter that when dipped in water would reveal a code necessary to progress beyond a certain point. You know what? The game is 28 years old. I don't got to be concerned with spoiling it from anybody. The code is 747 and you enter it during Chapter 4. Now what makes the story even more amusing is that when the game was made available for the Wii U Virtual Console, the code was available for viewing in the digital manual. Not this time though. Good work, Nintendo. 
Actor Johnny Depp is suing ex-wife Amber Heard for $50 million for defamation as new evidence was released last week that Depp may have actually been physically abused by Amber Heard. This comes as the couple separated in 2016 when Heard filed for divorce, citing domestic abuse by Depp. Initially, their controversy was settled out of court for $7 million, which Heard donated to charity, and this has not been discussed since as both had signed non-disclosure agreements. However, last year in an op-ed for the Washington Post, Heard spoke about abuse she suffered, though not specifically mentioning Depp, insinuated his involvement, so Depp is now refuting her story and arguing that it's all a ploy to capitalize on the Me Too movement to advance her career. Most recently, Heard appeared as Mira in DC's Aquaman film. Fifty people so far have been charged by the FBI in the largest college admission scam ever prosecuted by the U.S. Justice Department. These charges involve a conspiracy to enroll children of wealth, including some of celebrities, into elite colleges by accepting bribes and cheating the SATs and ACTs. Not only that, but some parents had created fraudulent athletic backgrounds, including photoshopping images, and one parent even claimed their son had a learning disability to obtain assistance with his testing. According to prosecutors, in many of these cases, the students were unaware about test scores being doctored or any lying to get them enrolled. So far, none of these students have been indicted for any wrongdoings. The parents are the prime movers of this fraud, said Andrew E. Lelling, U.S. Attorney for the District of Massachusetts. At the center of this conspiracy is William Singer, founder of College Preparatory Business, the Edge College and Career Network, also known as The Key. Singer used The Key and its nonprofit side, Key Worldwide Foundation, as a front to funnel money without paying federal taxes and with its posing as a charity, allowed parents to claim their donations on their taxes. About $25 million was used between 2011 and 2019 to bribe coaches and administrators to ensure admissions for students. Singer pleaded guilty to counts of racketeering conspiracy, money laundering conspiracy, conspiracy to defraud the U.S., and obstruction of justice, as within a month of becoming a cooperating witness, he tipped off several families that he was wired and warned them not to incriminate themselves in conversations with him. Friday, March 15th, a white nationalist terrorist massacred 50 and wounded dozens more by opening fire on two mosques in Church Christ, New Zealand. He is a terrorist. He is a criminal. He is an extremist. But he will, when I speak, be nameless. And to others, I implore you, speak the names of those who were lost rather than the name of the man who took them. He may have sought notoriety, but we in New Zealand will give him nothing, not even his name, said Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. One lawmaker blamed the attack on immigration policies that allowed, quote, Muslim fanatics, end quote, to migrate to New Zealand and wound up with egg on his head for saying that. Literally. Senator Fraser Anning of Australia was left with raw egg on his head and shirt after a teenager raised his phone to record himself smashing the egg into the senator's head. Anning took a few shots at the kid before the kid was taken away by police. And now the teen, currently going by the name Egg Boy, A or E G G B O I, was later released, and there's a fundraising page to raise donations for his legal fees and to uh, purchase more eggs, which has already raised more than its goal of fifty thousand dollars. To Egg Boy, I salute you, son. And now back to your regularly scheduled podcast. <laughs> wow, a fifty million dollars defamation lawsuit. Jesus, I hope she signed on to a multi-picture deal for these Aquaman movies. It's that time again for America's number one show, Dumb Shit of the Week. That's right. Dumb Shit of the Week is the show where DJ Melly Mel finds dumb shit and we talk about it. Want your submission on the show? Find us on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks, or you can email us at officialoglfg at gmail.com. Now here's your host, DJ Melly Mel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, this week's dumb shit is no different than any any other dumb shit of the week. I found something, and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> now, this one does have a little bit more of an info dump than usual. Okay. 
But I feel that it is necessary. So here we go. All right. Getting this from CBSGlobal.com. Ooh. So official, official this Ooh. week. Ooh. Moving on up say. in the world. Hashtag journalism. I uh, know, right? <laughs> Cow cuddling. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Stop, stop, <laughs> stop. Emma time. What the fuck? Okay, go ahead. How cuddling? Okay, what, okay, what okay. Are they, it's just going to be people sleeping with cactuses. Uh, let me get through. Okay, all right. How cuddling. Mm-hmm. The, like moo cow. Oh. The weird okay. and expensive health trend. Wait, what? Okay, okay, health okay. Trend. All right, I'll stop. Stressed right. and have a couple hundred dollars laying around? Why not try cow cuddling? Mountain Horse Farm in upstate New York is offering a 60-minute cow cuddling session for $75. The farm also offers a full cow and horse experience, which lets customers... Is this some, like, weird bestiality shit? the fuck ...with this? both cows and horses. The 90-minute session costs $300. Animals have been proven to decrease stress in humans, but think emotional dogs, not cows. Cows have a body temperature that is slightly higher than a human's, and their heart rate is lower. Mountain Horse Farm notes on their site, cuddling with a cow, feeling that lower heart rate and higher body temperature is very relaxing. They will pick up on what's going on. On the inside, and since if you are happy, sad, if you feel lost, anxious, or excited, they will respond to that without judgment, no ego, or agenda. The session starts with a few breathing exercises in a gathering teepee <laughs> for about 15 minutes. Well, now we're getting weird. Okay. Oh, oh now? <laughs> to well, no, 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 out, no. To take you out of your head and into oh your body. Oh, God. Then it's cow cuddling time. Oh, my God. (laughs) The 1,000-pound animals are naturally calm, says the Mountain Horse Farm, which is what they hope that the cows can pass on to their human cuddlers. Benefits of the session include relaxation, healing, help with overcoming fear, and some building self-confidence. Okay. Okay, now we can all laugh because (laughs) this is the stupidest thing that I've ever heard. Oh, uh, so this feels like some new age, Hippie like shit. vegan ass hipster bullshit. It's like, yeah, I go, I pay $300 to go hug a cow and lay on a horse. Like, what the fuck? There's a picture included. Yeah, it's it's like some dude like laying on a cow like it's a pillow as the cow is laying down like behind his head. Uh-huh. It's like, are you fucking serious, man? This is how people end up fucking <laughs> they farm animals and shit. Right? He's like, you know, he's like, they're, they're, they're so calming and, and they're so warm. Connection. Right, and that pussy's so wet. I mean, um, it, uh, uh, sorry, not not that last part. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I have a dog. I'm a big dog person. That's the whole time you were saying that, and it was like, oh, you know, like stress animals and stuff. Because uh-huh. that is a real thing. Yes, it is. And I go totally buy a support. fucking dog. You totally can support three hundred dollars. You can get like two dogs. Depending on where you go for yeah, your dogs, breed, no, I mean, yeah. you, my dog was free. We need to start a farm. <laughs> God no, damn it. We don't. Every week I find a new profession I need to go into. <laughs> we we start in a farm and we're just going to raise cattle and people are going to come fucking hug them yeah, for stress. If you, if you lead them, they will come. Right, it, you know what? It's like, hey, while you're here, if you can go ahead and bale this hay and milk these <laughs> motherfuckers for me too, that'd be great. This is all a part of the therapy. Don't yeah, don't yeah, worry, yeah, yeah. it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Right, and can you uh, go shovel this pig shit for me too? <laughs> what? It's it's all therapeutic. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. St- strap uh, some chicken feed to you, and we'll push you down the hill with some rollerblades on. What the on. fuck, man? Like Benoit, is it just me? Am I being weird? I mean, is does this make sense? No. <laughs> no it does yeah. Not. No. No. It. No. It makes sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense that I, I don't think this – when it comes to people dealing with therapy, you know, they pay therapists, they pay psychiatrists. But to pay to cuddle with animals seems kind of strange, but no stranger than it would be to, like, cuddle with a person. Okay. Well, However, cuddling with, like – but cuddling with a horse or a cow doesn't seem that strange to me just because we're from Michigan. There are legit farmers. There are legit yeah. ranchers who own horses. They groom horses. Sure. They breed horses. They pet horses. They rub horses. I could see somebody in a field just lying down with an animal and not necessarily think anything weird of that. But when you get somebody who's completely uh, 
outside of that realm who is paying. From, like, the city. Yeah, yeah. but they're doing this in upstate New York, not Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like. Oh, but, 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 you know, but, 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 but no. Well, I, but, I, don't th- I don't think that's weird. I think it, I think it is. I think it's weird that they're paying to do it. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think, I think it's stupid that they're paying to do this. But then again, if this does. I don't know if this is like if this is really therapeutic and it helps them mentally or emotionally, you know, good for them. I'm not going to knock it, but this almost seems like a bit of a gimmick to sucker people in. Oh, for sure. And that is like that kind of grosses me out. Yeah, I feel like some farmers from where this as a joke, and it's like we can make money off these stupid motherfuckers. I don't like farm animals. No, so that would not calm me down at all. Like, you want to give me a cow, make it a steak, a burger, Damn. Um, put it on a plate somehow. I don't, I don't like farm animals. Well, see, that goes to what I was saying, because there are some, there are ranchers out there that actually have cows and have horses, and they consider them family yeah. like you would yeah. your dog or a cat. Yeah. I guess. So it, a it's cat. more a matter of the individual, it's more a matter of the individual's background. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. I know, I know a girl who used to raise horses. And I'm sure if they were in the stable and the horse was just lying down and she was, like, you know, brushing its, its hair or whatever, I'm sure she probably would just, like, she might have laid next to it, assuming, like, the pen wasn't dirty or anything. And sure, It sure. would have been nothing weird about that. And I've been to fairs where they've had animals out there and you're kind of affectionate with the animals. I've been licked by a cow. It's like, mm. that doesn't seem weird to me at all. But to hear about people charging money to do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. That almost seems exploitive. And I don't like it. So if it's a matter of these people are doing this, if they're just doing it for the weird experience, I might, I'd probably be like, okay, you're doing it for a one-time experience thing. Okay, sure, whatever. But you, as you, a legit re- therapy or something? It's like, man, I had a as really a, hard day at work. <laughs> Y'all need to go hug this cow. Le- as a legit therapy, I don't know because I don't know if it's if it's if it's people who are just down and out being exploited, or if it's just people who are just one time, hey, let's go kick it with a cow. Yeah. It's like I've I've ridden a camel. I thought oh, that was wow. pretty fucking cool. But, I've ridden an elephant. I thought that was fucking cool too. Like I've pet animals. I, I, I think it. I think it's only weird if this is being used as a way to exploit people. Otherwise, I don't really think this is stupid. No, I you 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 make a valid point because, like I said, you know, therapy dogs and stuff like that. You know, like they'd bring it to like hospitals where right, people are right. like, you know, dying from cancer or something like that. Right. So there there is something to it. I mean, it's just odd because. Like you said, there's people who are not of that element that are coming and paying hundreds of dollars to go right. do it. That's, I think, the weird part about it. Because it's, it, And as well, too, if you're not comfortable with or familiar with farming animals, kind of like Mel is, you know, it just feels like an odd thing. Because uh-huh. it's like, you know, sure, if it's a golden retriever, you don't think twice All about it. Long. It's like, whatever. All but day long. when it's like a cow, then it's kind of like, ah. Yeah. I mean, I I agree Meh. with I agree with both of you, uh-huh. and Ben is right. You uh-huh. know, if that you know you're born and raised on a on a farm, sure. or you're around farms, or yeah. you know, it's not the cow is your pet. Sure, right. Essentially, right. I mean, I'm sure yeah. that you use it for food at some point, but got to put old Bessie down and. You know it's fucked up too. Um, you you milk the damn cows, and you, right? Exactly. How more, and, and sometimes if you do breed them, you will artificially inseminate right. them. Like you cannot get yeah. more intimate with a cow than that. So I think just like laying down next to it for a half hour is not weird. But I uh, I also like think an armadillo or, or a skunk <laughs> or something. That, well, hey, you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I, no, I'm just saying yeah, something yeah, that yeah. is yeah. not something that is not considered usual for humans to regularly interact with or have as pets then it might be considered strange only for the fact that it's not common. My stepdad right. had a pet raccoon, so you I don't... Know, you know what I yeah. would want as a therapy animal? A fucking sloth. That I think would those be things awesome. are awesome, and I, would, I want a sloth as a pet. Like, legit. Uh, Amber would never go for that shit, but I would totally get a sloth as a pet. I'd be good with a koala. I held one when I was in Australia, and it smelled like eucalyptus, and he felt like a toddler, so... Yeah, but they got claws and shit. Them motherfuckers yeah, but are dangerous. If you... The one I held was fine. <laughs> but anyway. I'm, I'm going to agree with Mike because, like, if I had a sloth, I could set him down well, on the couch, uh, go take a shit for, like, 20 minutes. He wouldn't get that far. No, right? Sloth, sloth <laughs> you could leave the front door wide right. open and he wouldn't even make yeah. it to the door. Sloths have claws, too. Yeah, but he's so slow. If he wants to swipe at you, you'd <laughs> be like, oh, 
<laughs> this is like the Matrix. Just dodging. I mean, people just... have you know people have gerbils, uh, mice, chinchillas, turtles, yeah. Yeah. snakes. I get know, a turtle. Bearded dragons. Yeah. You know, things that are common that you might pull out and that kind of run around you. Rabbit, you know, things like that. So I don't think this is that weird. Yeah, because see, I could totally leave a sloth, go to work, come back. He probably would still be at his food bowl <laughs> where I left him when You're I like, left. Oh, so. Dad's gone again. I'm going to go watch TV. Right. It's like, oh, oh, we left dinner out. You better go put that away before the sloth gets to it. Like, oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> like, uh, it'll be it, fine. It, it, it's just the whole pain for therapy thing I'm, I'm on the edge about because yeah. I would need to know more specifics about this case. Because there are. There are legit ranches where for vacation you just go and you ride a horse. Yeah. So this is That's not true. really all that we- – it's not really all that weird to me. It just seems like it's something that I would rather – it. I don't it, – I just think it, it – It's a little suspect. Yeah. I would say like, when I come across it at first, it was – No, no. I, I think the way they well, package no, no. the name, yeah. especially cow cuddling, that is what – Cow cuddling. Like, yeah, what that, the f- that's what threw me off because I was like, what is this? Is this on like a – Pornhub blog? <laughs> like, where the fuck are you getting this story from? She's like, yeah, uh, CBS. CBSphilly.com. Uh, yeah. But but go ahead, go ahead. I don't know. I mean, I think at a first glance, it was real crazy, especially me not being a farm animal kind of girl. I'm still with you, though. I think it's still weird. <laughs> like, like man, know. like, look, you if you're going to pay $300 for therapy, so you might as well go just get go to fucking therapy. acupuncture <laughs> or go get cupped or some shit. I was saying, you, know? you can put me in a massage parlor with, like, some Chinese lady doing cups on my back for yeah, $300. Yeah, go, yeah. I'm like, look, you could spend your money much more wisely. Or you just go to a normal fucking petting zoo and and spend like forty bucks, and you can take you and some friends and shit, and get probably the same experience. I'll say now three, they won't let you get in the pen and yeah. fucking hug this animal. No, but, but you can reach over the fence yeah. and touch them. Maybe yeah, right. shit, some goats scream at you and shit. It'll be fun. <laughs> go go sit at the animal shelter. Yeah, thank you. There you go. It's free. Yeah, and they always looking for volunteers. Mm-hmm. You get to feed the puppies. You get to love on the cats. No, because that would actually be being productive to the rest of the world. And they're, they're not there for that. Yeah. They're there for me. Okay. okay. I'm well, here for me. You can still go to an animal shelter and sit in a corner with the puppies and the dogs and the cats mm-hmm. and just pet them. Yeah. I, I couldn't do that because I'd want to take them all home. Like, yeah. I, 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 I'd, feel, I'd feel terrible after I leave. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I... Now, you want to talk about some dumb shit. You ever heard of Prantricize? No. Oh, look that up. Uh, uh maybe. I was going to say, I'm, I'm worried now. <laughs> that can't be. It, it's got to fall somewhere between cow cuddling and Fruit Loops, so. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. Prantricize is not fetish in any way. Okay. It's, it, Neither is it's... cow cuddling. That's what I said. It falls oh, between okay. the two. Oh, okay. Those two extremes. Okay, okay. okay, I got you. But go ahead, Mel. But, yeah, so that is the dumb shit for the week. And as we deduce, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dumb, but it's not oh. as dumb as some things. I enjoyed it. I thought we all needed a That's great what Kyle laugh. Said too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, it's funny that you mentioned this because I did, like, a couple years ago here of, like, uh, cuddle parties. There's actually – Yeah. I don't yeah. remember, like, I, I know what you're talking you can about. Actually, you can pay people to just cuddle with yeah. them. Yeah, there's a, a lady that I just saw not too long ago. She makes her money. She's essentially an escort with no sex. Yeah. She just, just cuddles. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, she just so cuddles. Hey, if you did get hard, it's cool. You know, I understand. You can't put it in me or nothing, but you know. You can't touch me with it. We, we can't just touch cuddle. You wouldn't happen to have a, a, a photo of this woman, would you? <laughs> right, right, right. Some blonde-headed girl. I'm sure. Hey, look. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyways. Um... That is it for the dumb shit this week. Um, if you have any questions about my thought process on how I pick dumb shit, any comments about the dumb shit that I've picked, or, you know, you just want to try to out dumb shit the dumb shit for the week, you can find me <laughs> You can find me at Froggy Beaver on Twitter, or you can always email the show at officialoglfg.com. I like, no. I like that. Out dumb shit the dumb shit. Out dumb shit. If you can out dumb shit, sh- y'all can send that shit to me. If you, I'm yeah. too, if you can out dumb shit the dumb shit. I want to see uh, you motherfuckers be stupid. Right, right. Yeah, and if you want to include if you want to include Benoit, I guess he's at Benoit Gaming on Twitter. B E N W A H. Yeah, just take like the dark wing duck theme and just let's get stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 
Move it on. Cow cuddling. You humans are fucking weird. That is all. I did not see this coming. I thought that this was done and over with and we would not hear about it again. But it is official. Disney is rehiring James Gunn to come back and direct Guardians of the Galaxy 3. All now, right. Three cheers for uh, redemption, I guess. Um, here, here. Right. <laughs> now, dilly dilly. <laughs> now, now, just to give you some background info real quick, if you don't know the story behind this, um, back in the summer of last year, these right-wing um, pundits, I guess, um, who did not like James Gunn because some of the political statements he made about President Trump on Twitter went through his Twitter feed and found these 10-year-old tweets of him making pedophilia jokes and rape jokes and different things like that, and they resurfaced them and posted them around, and he was subsequently fired from Disney because of this. Now, it was uh, this whole thing, and people were upset about it, and, uh, you know, um, the it was kind of like this back-and-forth thing for a while, but Disney made their decision, they had some meetings with him afterwards, it was a potential that he might get brought back, but they decided to stick by their guns, and they let <laughs> him go. <laughs> ah, I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> but they, yeah, they... <laughs> Wow. They they decided to not bring him back on, but now they have. Now, I'm going to give you the story. I'm getting this from Deadline.com. They said the decision to rehire Gunn, he was fired last July uh, by Disney after alt-right journalists made public a fusillade of decade-old social media missives that made light of pedophilia and rape was one that was mauled and actually made months ago. Following conversations with Disney Studio leadership and the team at Marvel Studios, why the change of heart? After the firing, Walt Disney Studios chairman Alan Horn met with Gunn on multiple occasions to discuss the situation. Persuaded by Gunn's public apology and his handling of the situation after, Horn decided to reverse course and reinstate Gunn. The social media messages were indefensible, but the filmmaker never did anything but blame himself for poor judgment displayed at a time when he was emerging from the trauma film factory and attempting to be a provocateur. There were no reports that Gunn ever engaged in the behavior he lampooned, unlike the defensive posture exhibited by Kevin Hart that led him to skip hosting the Oscars. Gunn fell on his sword early and often and never lashed out at Disney. Ultimately, Gunn's missives were poorly chosen words and not actions, though Disney's quick trigger was completely understandable when the social media messages were first reported by outlets like Fox News. Those outlets reported that Gunn's missives were exposed as payback for Gunn being a vocal critic of President Donald Trump. So, a couple things I just wanted to hit on on this. I, I am happy that he did get his job back because... It's it's been difficult for me because I put a lot of thought into this. It's been really difficult for me to kind of figure out where I stood on this, but I think I finally figured it out. I I do not like character assassination from any side, whether it be you're on the left, you're on the right, whatever. Right. If it is something that you have done and you still stand behind that and don't repent or try to find redemption in that, then yeah, fuck you. You, you did some fucked up shit. Right. But social media has become this tool of really destruction, really to the point where I, cause okay. Facebook does this thing where every year or so it'll bring up things like, Hey, remember this post you made? Uh -huh. And some of the posts that have come up from like years ago, I'm like, Ooh God, I was in a dark place when I was, saying this shit because it was like, oh, I went through a breakup or I was having a bad day or I was pissed off at somebody. And it's like, hey, remember that time you were ranting and raving about this thing on Facebook? And I'm like, uh. And, 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 time to come down. Right. And, and, and it's a reminder of how you've changed and evolved as a person. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's not fair to try and use social media to try to characterize how someone is because of something they said in the past. Now, again, if it's something that you are not remorseful for, 
and you refuse to change your position on it, then that's a different conversation. Right. But if it's something where you're like, hey, man, look, like that was a different time in my life. You know, I, I'm a change person now. Like everyone e- e- changes and evolves. And it's like, you know, when, when you were five, you know, you smash birthday cake into your face. You don't still do that shit now. We all change as people over time. So it, it, it's difficult for me because say, for example, and I'm going to try not to get too political in this, but I need to use this as an example to use as an example when Donald Trump was running for president initially Mm -hmm. and the video surfaced of him talking about grabbing women by the pussy. Mm -hmm. Okay. He never really apologized for that or really took that back and was like, Hey, what I said was wrong. You know, it was, it was a conversation behind closed doors. You know, it was, it was inappropriate. It was not something that should have been said. He kind of just brushed it off as, Oh, guys talk like that all the time. It's just locker room talk. Like he never admitted fault. Right. And I feel that it's still okay to hold that against him because he has never backtracked on what he said. Sure. You know, he, he blew it off like it wasn't a big deal, but he never came to terms with it and said like, Hey, that was wrong. Right. So that is a different situation. Something like, with Kevin Hart or say with James Gunn, I feel like they're like, Hey, you know, it was a joke. I didn't mean it to offend anybody, but looking back on it in retrospect, that was wrong. I shouldn't have said something like that. And to admit fault, then I can accept it more because at least you took responsibility as an adult and as a human being and said, I did something that was wrong and I apologize. And I'm going to try to work to not do those things again. Sure. That being said though, I mean, do you think that <clears throat> seeing as how Disney is a family friendly company and stuff like that, and they cater towards children and different things like that, do you think that they should have, I'm trying not to say stuck by their guns again. <laughs> do you think <laughs> that they should have brought him back or should they have stayed the course and said, you know what? No, we, we can't have any association with you whatsoever because of what your past comments represent and how that may make us look as a company. Honestly, I think that we all make mistakes, Mm -hmm. myself included. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I am not perfect. (laughs) Not DJ Melly Mel. Yep. Sorry, kids. I'm not, you know, none of us are. None of us are perfect. And if it were something, if it were an action that he had done Mm -hmm. other than just posting on the internet. Right. I think that we'd be, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. If he was on catch a predator or some shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. you know, there were allegations against right. him or anything like that. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. We've all said stupid shit. Yeah. I can think of numerous times where I've said stupid shit mm-hmm. and it hurts mm-hmm. and you don't either, either you mean it to hurt or you don't, you say it trying to fit in whatever the case is trying to make a joke if you don't own up to it it's always going to hurt the people that it was directed at mm-hmm. always right even and, if and, and you I do feel like and, to to a degree when people have that you, you know how like when you go through phases in your uh-huh. life where it's like oh i was trying to be cool mm-hmm. and hang out with a certain group of people mm-hmm. and you act a different way mm-hmm. and then you get older and you look back and like i was an asshole yeah and you come back and the ones that say, damn, I was an asshole. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Those people are <clears throat> more likely to be forgiven and the event be forgotten. Right. As opposed to the ones that don't say anything or the ones that brush it off like, yeah, well, your feelings don't matter. It was just mm-hmm. just a joke. So my justification is what's right. All right. Fuck them. Yep. <laughs> What what about you, Benoit? What, what what do you think about this whole thing? Well, first off, I'm gonna just assume that I'm not gonna say whether it's right or wrong in my opinion. I'm gonna just assume cynically that Disney, as a corporation, is gonna do whatever they feel is in their best interest for their pocketbook. So if this is not such a big deal that people are gonna boycott the film, Disney has no reason to get rid of them. From a financial standpoint, I'm not saying ethically, morally, or anything. Like that. Um. But as it comes to, like, what he's tweeted, have you read any of his tweets? Yeah, we actually did an episode where we talked about it when it first went down, and we went over the tweets. Okay, this was before I joined. Yeah, 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 in question. So it it was a whole thing, yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah, back in July when it went down, yeah, yeah, we, we talked about it and at length, yeah. Okay, because I'm reading some of these tweets now. Mind you, this is from the Daily Mail, which is a right-wing source, but I have no reason to believe these tweets are not something that he's actually... Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, there. they're not doctored. It, it was it was his own words, and it's some pretty foul shit, yeah. Now, no, some of this shit's pretty foul. Some of this shit... Okay, some of this stuff kind of made me go... Because <laughs> I could tell it was a joke, whereas some of this stuff is like... If I heard somebody say this in my presence, I'd be inclined to either punch them in the face or just distance myself from them and never want to associate with said person. See, that's the thing with the internet, though, is you can't ever, you can't read tone, or you can't, yeah, you can't read tone. Yeah. Like, you can read the words, and you can read, you know, either a small font or a big font, exclamation points, but there's... Yeah, well, that that's... That's the thing. You cannot pick up context right, or right, syntax because right. you... there's not going to be any uh, inflection of right. the voice, right. any subtlety to what is, is written down or typed out in word. But that doesn't mean that you can say something is a joke and it not land because there's no humor to it. Oh, I'm and not, yeah, I'm not saying subjective. that at all. Uh, I know very well that, you know, even if it's just right now, it still hurts. Yeah, it, yeah. I get yeah, that. Yeah. If it's offensive, it's offensive. Right. And, 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 and well, yeah, but go ahead, go ahead. Because, like, I, I'm, I'm, like, the one I read that I thought was kind of funny, and yes, this isn't sensitive, but I, I, you can tell this is a joke. Laughter is the best medicine. That's why I laugh at people with AIDS. Like, I read yeah. that, and I went, like, wow, that's dark. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that some is dark real humor. dark, yeah, that, yeah. that's funny. Mm-hmm. There, there, there's, there's fun, there, there's humor to that, because, I mean, in context, it's not saying he's laughing at people because he thinks it's funny they have AIDS. He's laughing at people because he thinks... You know, you're sick, it's medicine, it's medicinal, so laughter is... He's saying that in a humorous tone. Mm, right. But there's one thing it says where he says, The Expendables was so manly, I fuck the shit out of a little pussy boy next to me. The boys are back in town. Like, I get it. It's manly and you want to fuck, but then little pussy boy? You want to fuck a boy? Yeah. Yeah, that, there's nothing, yeah, that was like, one of the ones that kind of went a little far. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one of the things he goes, Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Because you're... Cause, you're not making a joke about pedophilia. You're making a joke about committing pedophilia. Right. And that's where it's like, that's not a joke. But then there was another one that's about, he, he's made a number of these tweets about rape. Oh, yeah. And, of course, rape is something nobody ever wants to really make light of in the case of it really happening. But there was one joke where it's like, uh, oh, where was it? One, where's one of these tweets here? Um, basically, it's like, okay, the best thing about being raped is when you're done being raped. It's like, whew. Feels great. I'm not being raped no more. Like something like yeah. that. I'm paraphrasing. Feels great not being raped. Yeah. Like, like in the, that is humorous in the sense that he is saying he. The whole premise of that joke is that rape is a bad, terrible thing. It's better not being raped than being raped. Right. So like, it's like now a lot of people are going to say that's insensitive, and I understand that. Oh I'm yeah, not saying it's not to them. It, but there is there is a reason to believe that's humorous, and I, I personally think it is humorous. But just a lot of these other tweets I've read makes me, as an individual person, not want to associate myself with that guy. Mm-hmm. That isn't to say that a, pro- a, a product or a production in the case that this guy works on, I'm instantly going to distance myself away from. Because I can separate the man's work from the man's personal, you know, popping off in the Sure, mouth. sure. And actions speak louder than words. And yes, his action of tweeting that shit was fucking terrible. And if Disney decided to get rid of him for that, even though it was 10 years ago, and, and keep him away, given the severity of what he said, I wouldn't see a problem in them doing that. So I don't see a problem in them saying, no, he can't come back, nor do I see a problem in them saying, yeah, he can come back if it's not controversial enough that they think, oh, it's not going to hurt our bottom line. Right. Because they're a company, they don't work on morals or ethics. No, no, no. They work on whatever's going to get asses and seeds to make them money. That's true. And so I, I have no horse in the race. Hmm. But I'll just reiterate what I said like once or twice already. Um, what this guy said on Twitter, some of it was funny, some of it was not. And dude's like twenty years my like twenty years my senior, damn near. If he doesn't understand the difference, he's kind of fucked up in the head. But if he directs good movies, okay, because he's not actually acting out on these stupid dumb things he said. But I still wouldn't hang out with the guy. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I I, I think and, we, we're all in agreement that. What he said, regardless of what his intention was, was in 
really poor taste and says a lot about like his character. I think I think the main thing that's in contention is can somebody be redeemed from something like that? Like like can you Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, yeah, look back absolutely and go like, hey, you know, redeemed. this was you know, at the time I thought I was being edgy and shit, but you know, looking back in retrospect as I've gotten older and you know, look back on it I was clearly being a dipshit and I shouldn't have said it because like I said, I don't care who you are. If you dig back far enough, you will find some fucked up shit that somebody said, especially on social media. But I I feel like it's all about how you handle it today. Because if like, like say for example, another example that's come up in the news recently is a Tucker, Tucker, Tucker Carlson, that son of a bitch. He, he handled this shit the wrong way. Exactly. And it's like, if you can't stop and say like, Hey, what I said was fucked up and wrong, and I apologize. I can respect you as a person to go like, hey, at least you acknowledge what you did was wrong, and you're trying to at least be remorseful about it. But when you double down, that's when it becomes a problem, in my eyes. Because now you're just being defiant, and it's like, no, fuck you, yeah, I said that shit, and I'll say it again. And it's like, that's when it becomes a problem. That's when it's like, okay, well, you not only don't feel bad about it, but you haven't learned anything. And you haven't changed at all either. It's like, because like I said, we, we all say things that we probably shouldn't have said. I mean, cause there was a time, especially like in the nineties and stuff. Like if you watch any like old, like comic view episodes or any like stand up comedians from like the late eighties, early nineties, they made so many homophobic jokes. Like Eddie Murphy's raw. He has a whole 10 minute bit making fun of gay people. And if you did that oh, yeah. shit today, oh, you would be fucking you know, ostracized from public, you know, discourse, but it was a different time then. And it was a little bit more acceptable. Not not saying that it's okay to ever, you know, put down any group of people, but I'm sure if you were to come to Eddie Murphy now and say like, Hey, do you still feel that it would be okay to make these kind of jokes? I'm sure I would hope that he would probably say like, no, you know, what I said at that time, even though it was accepted and okay, it was still not right. And, you know, I would not do something like this now, but if you was to go to him and he's like, yeah, fuck them faggots, you know, no offense, just using as an example, then, you know, it's like, okay, you, you haven't learned anything. Yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a difference between making somebody the butt of a joke for who or what they are and then attacking them for that reason. Right. Cause everybody, whether you're gay, straight, Muslim, Christian, white, black man, woman, trans, whatever, Everybody needs to have humility. Oh, yeah. But the difference is that a lot of people don't it, – it, it's, it's – it, where is this stuff coming from inside the person who spews it? Right. And Tucker Carlson's a, a fucking conservative, misogynistic prick who tried to double down on the stuff he said on Bubba the Love Sponge Show by, oh, now the, the fucking left wing or the, the attack – the PC police are attacking me for things I said. Well, yeah, because you said some fucking nasty things. Well, yeah, and not only and that, because like, you're not remorseful about it, because he was one of the people who jumped on the... Uh, for it, but because you're you're calling the people out who called you out on saying Exactly. That. It's like, he was one of the people who jumped on the whole bandwagon of, oh, James Gunn is a pedophile and this, that, and the other, and it's like, yeah, he said some, some, some fucked up shit, but that doesn't make him that thing. But then when somebody uncovers some shit from you, it's like, oh, well, it's different now. And it's like, no, you can't have it both ways. Like, if you're going to attack somebody else no. for that shit then that standard applies to you. You can't have it both ways. So that's why I'm saying I'm of the mind of if you can at least act like, hey, you know, even even like um with with our our, our favorite YouTuber, um uh, uh Logan Paul. I'm like if if after he came out with his apology tour and shit after this shit he did in Japan and everything else, if he didn't then go back and immediately start doing ignorant shit again, I would have accepted his apology. But it's like when you go back and do the same thing again or show that you really aren't remorseful, then it's like, okay, now your apology doesn't mean shit. I'm right. like, oh, I'm yeah. like, it's not hard to say, hey, I fucked up. Like, it, it, it's not. And, and, and I feel that we live in a world of imperfect beings and we're all constantly making mistakes over and over again and we're hopefully learning from those mistakes. And I'm just... I, I think this is one good example of if you make a mistake, get caught out on it, acknowledge that you did something wrong and try to be remorseful about it, then hopefully it will pass and you have an opportunity to 
make better decisions in the future and, and not have it held over you indefinitely. But if you fuck up and you double down on the shit and act like, Hey, you know, fuck you for even questioning me about it. Then you deserve to be ostracized. I mean, I think it's fair if you can't man or woman up and take, you know, yo L and say, Hey, own your shit. Yeah, ex- exactly. Own your shit. I'm like, but if not, then yeah, you deserve everything that comes to you after that. Yeah. Just, just like this fucking Fraser Anning or tried to say that, well, yeah, these, you know, there, there are, you know, I don't, this is a terrible thing the shooting in New Zealand, but it, it's, it's going to become, uh, you know, expected or acceptable, you know, because Muslim fanatics keep coming. Like the motherfucker tried to blame this white supremacist shooting up two mosques on the Muslims for being there. It's like, what the, what? Yeah, no. Or fucking, or like similar to when back in 2016, when Megyn Kelly was moderating the, a debate between Republican candidates and uh, Trump thought she, uh, he, she was being worse towards him and he just blamed it. Oh, she must be bleeding. Yeah. Like, no, motherfucker. Yeah. Or, you know, and, and as it comes to James Gunn, nobody is glorifying what he has said or done by if, – if you're against him coming back to direct this film, nobody is glorifying or marginalizing or giving him necessarily a pass on what he has tweeted by bringing him back into the film. Right. But if you feel that they are, don't see the film. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, you're allowed, especially when it comes to corporations and shit and people who are trying to make money, the, the loudest you can make your voice is through your dollars. So it's like, you know, if, if you feel that strongly about it, you know, don't support the movie like right. that, that. That's that's your main way of expressing you know, your, your distaste for their decision. But well, honestly, like Nike, those people were burning their Nikes. Y- yeah. You already bought the Nikes. Nike doesn't care what you do with them. shoes. Right. They, they got your you money already. It. Yeah. And honestly, a better, that boy- shit faded away so quick. Uh-huh. A it's better like, boycott would have been, Oh, well I'm not buying Nikes. Right. Right. Because of this. Right. Which, which that was supposed to be metaphorically what that meant. But I promise you 90% N- of those people who Nike did didn't that shit. Care. Went and bought more fucking Nike. They still anyway. got their money. Yeah. It's like it's like if you buy a basketball jersey or any kind of paraphernalia, you bought some Nike branded shit. Right. So just just putting that out there. <laughs> Nike or Under Armour. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I don't know. I don't know if we've really discussed this in any length or even briefly, and I don't want to go way too off topic since we're already getting kind of political about this. But I will say one thing, and this is my personal opinion. If you, listeners of the One Giant Leap for pod, for podcast, you know, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> one giant leap listeners for to geek? the One yeah. Giant Leap for Geeks yeah, podcast, yeah. don't take don't take what I say right now and be like, oh, I'm not gonna fucking listen to any of your shit anymore or whatever, or do it, fuck you. But um, <laughs> like, you know, like, like, don't don't glorify the people who've done things that you think are wrong or that you think are bad. That's and, and even if you do something that's bad, own your shit. And this kind of ties also into the whole, like, can the Confederate flag issue. Where a lot of people are like, you know, you can't tear down monuments or we don't want you to have Confederate flags on things. And they're like, well, this is a part of our history. And we're like, this, and then they try to, like, say, well, this didn't represent that. No, motherfucker, it represented a group of people who tried to rebel against the U.S. primarily because uh, they wanted to have their economy boosted by slave labor. Mm-hmm. And so when you see people nowadays who want to tear down those monuments or statues or get rid of the flags, you're like, they're not doing that as a way to say, you know, fuck you guys in the South. They're not doing that personally against you. They're doing that because that was iconology. That was um, representative of a time when people literally did do horrible things for horrible reasons. And so don't, don't they're, that, that's, that's completely different from like Disney letting James Gunn come back to do this or completely different from like Tucker Carlson. It like there that that's like the line between owning your shit and not owning your shit. Oh, yeah. Those people don't want those people who are for the statues and the Confederate flag, they're not owning their shit. I agree. I agree. But yeah, so you know we'll see how this this pans out. Um and oh and, and for anybody that was curious, he is still going to be directing Suicide Squad reboot 
uh, thing, the suicide, whatever the fuck they're calling it, and simultaneously doing this. But uh, DC came out and said, like, yes, he will be doing our movie first, and then he will go do Guardians of the Galaxy three. And it's like, uh-huh. all right, Marvel. I feel like Marvel low key did this shit just to fuck with DC. Like anytime DC does anything, Marvel comes in and puts out some shit. Because it was like when DC made Batman versus Superman, Marvel was like, uh, Civil War. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, hey, they, they heard that they scooped up James going to do a Suicide Squad. They're like, uh, hey, you want to still do that Guardians of the Galaxy shit? He's like, yeah, all right, fuck it. All right, kids, that is it for the show. Remember, you can always find us at our home, one giant leap for geeks.lipson.com. We are also on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or really anywhere else you get your podcast. Now, make sure to show us some love. So go ahead, take your little fingers. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, rate us, follow us, give us a review, and all that shit. If you have any comments, criticisms, or you just want to say hi, you can always email us at officialoglfg at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at Giant Leap the Number Four Geeks as a show on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram. I think I have Pinterest. You probably might have Pinterest. Everybody got Pinterest. I don't know. All you have to search it for is one giant leap for geeks. If you want to find me, DJ Melly Mel, I am at Froggy Weaver on Twitter. And Ben is at Benoit Gaming. B-E-N-W-A-H Gaming. All right. Enjoy the vernal equinox or the autumnal equinox if you're in the same <laughs> Sounds good. All right. You guys have a good night. Bye.